The following program is a special presentation of Lax Sports Network. Oh, we are just 30 minutes away. Welcome to the special edition of College Central. I'm Megan Triplett. He's Tom Eschen. And the game coming up, it's the top 10 matchup between Towson and Loyola. We've all been waiting for this moment. Oh, we've been excited talking about it for days now. Mm -hmm. Great way to wrap up your Wednesday. But before we get you out to Towson for the big game, we have 30 minutes to get you ready for yes. it with the previews and tell you what you need to know about these two teams, the players, coaches, the whole nine yards. So let's first talk about Loyola, a player that Towson will have to worry about. You might think they're worrying. I don't know if it's worried is the right word, but they're going to have their eyes on Pat Spencer and plays like that. The two-time Tawar Tan Trophy finalist has been a human highlight reel every week, every game. And if you don't believe me, just check out this goal he had last week against Rutgers. This mm -hmm. might be the 200th time I've seen it, and it's still just as good. Right. It's still absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. I'm still thinking about, oh, my God, how did he do that? One leg pushed in the air. Unbelievable. He, he's, you know what he's going to do with something like that tonight. I hope so. And, and he's been so, I mean, he has the highlight reel plays. Let's take a look at his, some of his stats here. 13 goals, 8 assists, 21 points this year. In he, three games. In just, he's only in just three. three games. And, you know, he's so athletic and does so, so many great things. But he's a great feeder. Like, mm -hmm. he, he gets everyone in the offense involved. And that is why Loyola has been so good this year. Spencer is definitely impressed a lot of people so far, and um, he's impressed us and impressed a lot of the pundits and analysts around around the world. And we actually talked to Evan Washburn about him recently. Fortunate to have, have seen every step along the way for Pat Spencer, and, and among all the things he does really well, he seems to get better as the season wears on. And I think what's made this year so impressive is that he's played at a May level here in February, and, he, and he's really catapulted himself into kind of being a recognizable face just as an athlete. And for a guy whose personality is pretty reserved, he's starting to become a regular on, on national highlight shows, and, and that's only good for him, Loyola, and the sport. And nothing he's done up to this point has surprised me. It's kind of been what we've seen just at an elevated level, and there's no reason to believe that it'll that it'll quiet at any time soon because he's been doing it all, all this time against really good competition and truth be told he's going to have some games against uh, worse teams once they get conference play so it, to him for him to be doing this against some of the best teams in the country makes it even that more that much more impressive all right so Loyola has attackman Pat Spencer now as for Townsend they have attackman Brendan Sunday and he will look to continue his dynamic scoring the captain added another nine points to his season total last weekend at number 16 Georgetown and Sunday scored all four of his goals in the decisive fourth quarter while also dishing out two helpers in that frame Sunday now has 11 goals and eight assists in just three games. Those are good stats, too. That's nothing to be reckoned with. Here's the tail of the tape between these two teams. A d identical record, scoring plenty of goals a game and also playing good defense as well. Something that we're watching in this one. Biggest difference there is at faceoffs. So we'll discuss that in just a little bit. And on the extra man opportunities, they're an even 33% apiece. But for more on this matchup itself, let's go back over to Evan. Well, an absolute titanic matchup early in the season. Midweek, this is a game you wish you had all the eyes of a weekend on, but it should garner a ton of attention here with two top 10 teams. Obviously, Loyola comes into this game riding the wave of being the nation's number one team. They having the best player in the game, arguably of the last 20 years in Pat Spencer. But Towson showing a lot of the medal that they had two years ago in the way they made that run to a Final Four. When you boil this matchup down, I think you can't ignore the familiarity and the proximity that these two universities have and how that weaves its way into the game. And I think it really helps Towson because there'll be no intimidation based off of what Loyola has done this season and what Pat Spencer brings. That doesn't mean there won't be respect. That will be a given in a Sean Adlin coach team. When it comes to keys, I look at Towson having to ride Alex Woodall in this game to close to 80% if he can do it. He's been at that 70 to 
the 75 range all season long. Bailey Savio has been just north of 50%. They have to dominate possession. Towson wants to make this a street fight type game that is under 10 goals in my opinion. Obviously Loyola is capable of playing that way. Their defense though I think is vulnerable and if Towson can dominate time of possession and play within the restrictions of a shot clock with face-off wins it gives them their best shot. The biggest concern for Towson has to be the health of their best player, their best defender and Zach Goodrich. How that plays itself out we'll have to wait and see. Obviously defending Pat Spencer is going to be the priority for Towson, for Sean Nadlin and you'd love to have the CAA Defensive Player of the Year from 2018 on your roster. Should be a ton of fun. Can't wait to see this one. All right, thanks, Evan. So Evan just mentioned the face-off position. This is going to go down to the wire. Tom, you saw the stats. They're at an even 33%. Yeah, the, the face-offs are pretty interesting in this game, I think. It's definitely something we're going to be watching when it comes to that matchup. And like Evan said, the possession is so big, especially for a powerful offense like Loyola. Um, and, and Towson sort of trying to detract from that and help them not – score as often and have the ball as often, which is really something that they could take advantage of, especially right. if Towson can have the ball when it comes to the, the face-off X and can win that possession and get that advantage. So Alex Woodall will be at the X for Towson. We know so much about him. And so far, the junior has been dominant in his first three games of the season, winning 73% of his draws and winning double-digit draws in each game, along with 37 ground balls. We caught up with Woodall this week, and here's what he has to say about his season thus far. In two years past, I haven't really had the most success that I've always wanted to have against Loyola. Two years we came up short. Um, I don't think it's as much as focusing on the other guy. Um, I think it's just don't get in my own head, um, forget about what's happened in the past, and play my game because, I mean, yeah, he, he uh, Billy Savio is a great player. I've uh, watched a lot of film on him, but I think uh, what's really big is being face up that is focused on what you do best and um, kind of just blocking everything out, ignoring the noise of what's happened before, uh, how many people are going to be here, and just focus on myself and what, what uh, the unit needs to do in order to win this game. All right, so Woodall will be going against Loyola sophomore Bailey Savio. And let's just take a look at the faceoff by the tail of the tape. So, so far, Loyola has won 46 of 84. Towson done a little bit better, 52 of 71. That is 73%. And when it comes to ground ball, Towson has that also over Loyola. They have 37 as compared to Loyola's 19 and have gotten two goals off of them and four points. And obviously with a big face-off matchup coming like this, you know we have to hear from the face-off master himself, Fred Gredlian. This week in Maryland, we got another elite-level face-off matchup between Bailey Savio of Loyola and Alex Woodall of Towson. Both teams are going to try to stay at the top of the rankings. Bailey Savio is a grinder, super athletic guy, can stay in with you, can also go with speed in different directions. Alex Woodall is slowly but surely becoming the absolute total package of a face-off man. His uh, speed on his, on his face-offs is obviously uh, elite level, but his footwork has gotten better. He's making the right reads on his exits. His wings are starting to find chemistry with him. So right now, this is going to be our awesome test between two guys who are at an elite level right now and two teams that are really trying to make a statement this weekend. All right, so we talked about the face-offs, but also let's talk about the defense, too. You see the celebration by Kobe Smith. That was one of the highlights of our first game of the week on here at the CAA. Kobe Smith was awesome. The mm -hmm. long stick scored two goals against Hopkins and definitely gave his teammates something to cheer about. Yeah, in just his three games alone, Smith has had nine ground balls and six caused turnovers. So to break this down a little bit more, let's send it over to Joe Keegan. Towson sophomore Kobe Smith has been dominating the top matchup for the Tigers defense. Here he is on Cole Williams. He trails Williams to X, ready for the rollback, and when Williams wants to get to 5-5, five and five, he pushes him to 10-10 and 10 and alters the shot. Smith owned that matchup against one of the best Dodgers in the Big Ten, and two weeks later, drew one of the best Dodgers in the Big East. While Smith might start on ball against Pat Spencer, Towson will likely throw Loyola several different looks. Here's Smith in their zone defense. Watch him get physical, sink back into the hole, pick off this pass, and start the fast break. 
So doing the little things well. We're watching for Smith once again tonight. Any maybe a good celebration or two as well. On the Greyhound side of things, Jacob Stover will be tasked with stopping the Towson offense. Yeah, you know, I got a chance to talk to Stover earlier this week about tonight's matchup and just overall his season. He is so well spoken mm -hmm. and he is taking his last year in a Loyola jersey very, very seriously. Yeah, yeah, and he's doing a good job of it mm -hmm. too. He's third in the nation in saves per game. He's the you know, the son of a former NFL kicker, Matt Stover. I don't know if you've heard that before. He was the 2018 Patriot League Goalkeeper of the Year. This season, holding Virginia and Rutgers both under 10 goals. Take a listen to what Stover has to say about gearing up for tonight's big rivalry. It really comes down to who focuses up, who pre prepares well, and then who's able to uh, put actions into play on, on the field. So we know that Towson's a good team coming up. We've been, we've been playing well over the past three weeks. But one game, two games, three games doesn't defy the season. So we're prepared. We're looking forward to Towson, and, and we're focused up, too. All right. Another Loyola player other than Pat Spencer to look out for is freshman midfielder Chase Scanlon. Scanlon, who was the youngest member of the Iroquois national team this past summer, scored nine goals and tallied two assists in his first three collegiate games. Here he is now with Tom. Um, they have a good team, and uh, definitely, like, it's going to be a competitive game. Um, I'm excited to get out there and see, you know, see what our team can do. Like we're preparing right now, and hopefully, you know, good things will come. As long as we work hard, come out firing. Yeah, it was nice talking to him this week. Definitely a nice kid, a freshman making a big impact. And you know, we go from freshman to some alums weighing in on the matchup. Ryan Drenner on his Tigers. Scott Ratliff with quite the praise for Pat Spencer. That's coming up. And we'll check in with the guys on the call today with Travis Elders and Davey Imola are watching for in today's matchup. That's pretty cool there. Look at, oh, there's the helmet. Saturday on LAC Sports Network, we have a triple header of lacrosse games at 1 o'clock Eastern. It's number nine, Ohio State taking on Marquette in the Patriot Cup in Dallas. Also at 1 on Saturday is the CAA Game of the Week. It's Rutgers traveling to Connecticut to take on the Fairfield Stags. A lot of games of the week this week. Still more. Our second CAA Game of the Week on Saturday. The 19th ranked Georgetown Hoyas on Long Island to play Hofstra. All these games, of course, free here on LAC Sports Network and the Ellison app. Stay with us. Speed. Power. This trophy is not given, it must be earned. The NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championships. May 25th through 27th at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. In the stick, boom, on the money, cradle on the pass. With the first championship. Visit NCAA.com slash lacrosse to get your tickets today.
That was really cool. Yeah, I'm pumped. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Let's do this. There is Sean Nadalin and Towson looking to go 4-0 for the first time since 2016. That year, they opened with a 5-0 record live on the field. And there he is, Charlie Toomey and the Greyhounds. They're hoping to go 4-0 for the first time since 2012. That, of course, was the year they won the national title. Hmm. So a lot on the lines. A tale of two unbeaten teams. Two unbeaten teams. Someone's going to go home with a loss. So we'll get some perspective from alums on each side of things in just a moment. But first, let's check in with Travis Elders and Davey Emla, who were on the call. What's going on, everybody? Alongside the former North Carolina Tar Heel, Davey Emla. I'm Travis Elders. This one is a huge one. The battle for Baltimore as it's the 62nd overall meeting between these two. A rivalry, Davey, you know a little bit about growing up in Baltimore. Absolutely. You know, Charles Street rivalry, these two rivals being so close together certainly adds a little extra oomph to the game. As Coach Nadalon told us yesterday, getting a chance to speak with him. Two great programs who have really started out this, se this season strong, looking to make a statement here today. By the way, the second time in this rivalry, these two have met up with Loyola being number one. Towson won the first one back in 1992. When we look at terrific players, we're going to see a couple on both sides but nobody as terrific as number seven in green pat spencer of loyal you're absolutely right a lot of people are going to be tuning into this one and number seven is a big reason why he's just an absolute complete attack I mean, you're talking about a high level of lacrosse iq talking about a high level of lacrosse skill and really a high level of athleticism and balance that he's just been putting on display especially this season he's been doing it for four years but again i think taking that a little extra step and going to a new level here for his senior season spencer so much made about his height at six three but on the other side we got a guy in brendan sunday who's even taller at 6'5", and he's come out of his shell this year. Absolutely. Brendan Sunday is a guy you can't miss when you see him on the field. Big, strong, athletic guy. Going to be huge for today. Talk again, talking to Coach Nadalon, saying he's on the quieter side. Today would be a perfect opportunity for him to really break out of that shell and make a loud impression here for the Towson Tigers. All right, thanks, guys. Now, the best part about this matchup is that these two schools are just a few miles away from each other, and they're big rivals, so you know the alums on each side are extra excited to see this one. Like former Towson attackman Ryan Drenner, he was a senior on that 2017 championship weekend team, a first-team all-CAA player, now works with 3D lacrosse in Maryland. He led the Tigers in 2017 with 59 points, scoring 30 goals and 29 assists. So let's send it over to Tom, who's joined by Drenner now. So the Towson alum joins us now, Ryan. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. So obviously you've been a couple years now removed from the program and just seeing how they've looked this year. What's, what's been your take so far? Um, I thought that they looked great. Uh, they came out hot to the start of the season with a lot of energy. Um, they're playing well together, which is always a good thing. You like to see that early in the season. Um, and then just continuing to build that throughout the season because um, you know, the, the, the goal is to continue to play through May. So, um, you know, they're taking it one step at a time, and so far they're looking good. You've been there for the preparation for big games like this one. What is that like? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, that's why, that's why you go to college to play lacrosse, um, is to be in competitive games like the one that's going to happen tonight. Uh, I know at I know. Towson, yeah. Coach Natalie and his staff do a great job recruiting guys that – want to be there to play the number one team um, and if they're not playing the number one team they want to play the best next team you know so even at practice you know their mentality is that they have they're playing the best team that day whether you know that might be themselves or it might be a team in a different jersey um, you know regardless your their mentality is to you're playing the best team you have to put your best foot forward um, and, you know, preparing for a game like the one that's going on tonight, it, it, like I said, it, it's a lot of fun. Um, and that's really the, the main reason you go to school to play lacrosse. Yeah, knowing the proximity between the two schools, it feel a little bit better and a little bragging rights? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think Towson actually gets the, uh, the underhand on the, uh, the Charles Street rivalry. And I think we kind of set ourselves back up in that rivalry uh, just in the last decade um, with – you know, getting wins over Hopkins and Loyola. Um, so I think, you know, those three schools that all are centrally located on Charles Street right there, um, it's it's a real battle between each of them now. Um, each season, it's a it's a tough game whenever you play those guys. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun, like I've been talking about. Yeah. Last question, what does Towson have to do to win tonight? 
Uh, I think they just have to play their game. Uh, I think being at home definitely helps them tonight. Uh, they might, you know, if they come out strong in the first quarter, like I know that they focus on doing, um, you know, they can set their tone and play their game for the rest of the, the four quarters. Um, obviously, taking care of Pat Spencer, making sure they keep him in check uh, is going to be a high importance. So um, I think the way to do that is by playing together. You know, I, it's not just going to be one guy that, that stops Pat Spencer on defense, you know. Um, they, and that's something that Coach Natalin's defense defenses always do, is do a good job of playing together and playing as a unit. Um, you know, I, I've played with a guy like Chad, Chad Patterson's a guy I played with in high school. Um, I've seen him, you know, lock up some, some star attackmen uh, on the other team. I've seen him at practice, you know, and so I know that they have capable bodies. It's just a matter of the help behind it. And then offensively, you know, like I said, setting that tone, uh, getting out early and often, scoring maybe on their first possession or one of the first ones in the quarter, and, uh, and then just kind of riding that momentum, knowing that they're at home, they're going to be a little more relaxed and, and hopefully can, can uh, you know, play their style of game for four quarters. Yeah, well, we know who you'll be rooting for tonight, right, Ryan? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Let's go to another alum. Scott Ratliff was a senior captain in 2013 at Loyola, ending his career as one of the program's top long stick midfielders ever. He finished his career with a long pole school record, 30 goals, 14 assists, and 44 points. He was Travis's latest guest on his Travis's Take podcast, and no surprise here, but he had quite the praise for Loyola senior Pat Spencer. I mean, he's, I think he could be the best player ever. I, I really do think that. Um, it's just hard to think of anybody that's got the, the complete package that he has, and that includes his demeanor. What, what I've been more, almost more impressed with than anything else is the way he's kind of owning um, his role and his kind of platform this year. You know, he's, he's, uh, he's everything you want in a, a teammate and a captain. He's a kind of a soft-spoken guy, and he's... Uh, you know, always been extremely hardworking and always been, at least from, from my vantage point, the type of guy that is doing the right thing. Um, but this year, the way he's just kind of playing with a, another level of swagger, um, I, I mean, I think that's kind of oozing off of him onto the rest of the team and, and everybody is elevating their game because of, of the way he's playing. All right, we are moments away from face off at Towson. Your predictions along with Barstool Jordy thoughts are on the way here on LSN College Central. In just 10 days, it's the 2019 Major League Lacrosse Collegiate Draft, live from the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte, North Carolina. Our coverage on Saturday, March 9th, begins at 7 o'clock Eastern, with the picks starting at 7.30 right here on LSN. The Ohio Machine on the clock.